Um, I can give you one more reason that's maybe a slightly more convincing than, um, than this and more memorable than this. There is a relationship between this and this. So let me do a little bit of algebra to show that relationship. So uh, let's see. Uh, let me do the algebra this way. So erase all of this. I don't think I need any of this now. Um, so well, I have here MVR is equal to NH bar. Let me rewrite it. So MVR is equal to N. Let me rewrite H bar once again. So H bar is uh, actually H over 2 pi. Right? Let me do a little bit of rearranging so that you can see some of the quantities as uh, something that you recognize. Let me put 2 pi over here, move MV over here. So 2 pi R is equal to N times H over mv, or I guess mv is momentum, right? So h over p. What do you see on the left-hand side? What is this? Circumference, all right. Now, if you happen to be aware of the other crazy assumption that De Broglie was making, what can you say about this ratio, h over momentum? That's the wavelength, right? So you could say, well, the right-hand side is n times the wavelength of the electron. So what, uh, what Bohr's assumption is equivalent to is saying that as the electron goes in orbit, the wavelength of electron, whatever that means, um, fits in an integer number into the circumference. Yeah? So it's like standing wave, right? It's like a standing wave. So you could say that. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so I think I actually have an uh, illustration. This simulation has that. Uh, oh, De Broglie, that's the one. Can I? Let's see. Let me erase all of this. So I, I don't know if you can really see this well. Let me turn off some of the lights so that you can see this better. This, is, I mean, circular standing waves are like, how do you ha have a mental picture of that? So let me just uh, show it to you this way. Um, oops. So I think I don't have any way of controlling it. I just have to keep shooting light. Um, let's see, how do I? Oh, there. So what you have, he, um, so these are illustration of different standing waves. At the lowest energy is where the wavelength is exactly equal to the circumference. Um, at each one of them, you fit uh, one more wavelength. The confusing thing here is the wavelength itself changes too, because with the higher momentum, your wavelength gets shorter. But um, that's what this is illustrating. That's the one wavelength version. And that's the one, two, three, four, five. That was five. <laughs> but you see why I'm not drawing it, right? <laughs> um, so that's the circular standing wave. and. Um, and this will be kind of a common feature in quantum mechanics. At some point, you have to make a, you have to make a quantum leap. You have to make a leap of assumption that, uh, that has no counterpart in your classical intuition. So in trying to explain this hydrogen atom, so these two models are kind of equivalent to each other. If you take a Bohr's version, then what you are saying is, for no reason whatsoever, other than it gives correct result, I'm going to assume this. And this results in all those different energy levels, quantized orbital um, distance, and all that. Um, you can take this as a starting point, and then you will end up here. And, or more precisely, you would end up here. 
And if you wanted to justify this somehow, as in like, why should this be true? One way to say this, oh, this must be true because electron must be in standing wave. <laughs> if that's what you're saying, then that leads you into De Broglie relationship. Or you can take it the other way. Um, and this other way is actually what I would prefer. You can start out with the De Broglie relationship, which has a different way of justifying it, what I did last week, right? You start out from here, and you get rid of all the light specific quantities. So you can start from here, and then you also once again say, oh, the electron must fit in standing wave pattern. <laughs> once you combine this with the standing wave pattern, then you uh, arrive back at this. So those are both the ways to say it. Um, let me leave you with this. Um, so what we have been doing so far has been introduction to quantum mechanics. And an aspect of that is that I've been saying some things that were not quite correct. For example, it's not quite correct that this, um, like you have a this state of electron that has angular momentum of h bar. That is not correct, right? So let me point out some things that are actually correct in the full-fledged quantum mechanics. And as long as there's no more revolutions in physics <laughs> in our life, you won't have to correct. This is correct in full quantum mechanical sense. This is the qu fully quantum mechanically correct expression for orbital angular momentum. Um, it's true that, you know, the, the, I guess, okay, it's the G component of angular momentum, and we'll actually use letter M for this. All right, <laughs> so this is correct. It, it, so one thing that Bohr guessed correctly, that's correct even until now, is that angular momentum is quantized. He was not quite correct about the details of how it's quantized, but one thing that is correct is it is quantized. And oh, I guess both things I wrote down here are correct. That's why I wrote them down. They don't have to be corrected. <laughs> so, um, so this is the beginning of quantum mechanics. It, uh, it starts out with these sets of assumptions that um, for now are starting out as um, kind of ad hoc assumptions, as in the only way we could justify it was, well, guess me correct results. So something must be right about them. <laughs> And uh, what we are going to do from now on is we are going to approach it more rigorously. We are going to have a starting point, kind of like we had the you know, first and second postulates of special relativity. We are going to have some kind of canonical relationship or some kind of uh, starting place. <laughs> and then everything else can follow from there. And I will tell you at the level we will cover in this class, um, we are going to start out, this will be our starting place for many of the things you will see. This De Broglie relationship is the best starting place for many of the full quantum mechanical treatment you will see. And when necessary, actually we will come back to this too, except that we won't have to qualify it for photon. It's energy of anything, energy of anything is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of the thing. It's just that you know, frequency of electron is a little bit hard to, like, what, what frequency are you talking about? <laughs> so, but this is a generally true relationship for anything. It's just that in some context, it's not quite clear what we mean by frequency. <laughs>